Are you ready for a change? Are you ready for your life to turn around? Are you ready for things to happen to bring you great success, to see your dreams and visions come to pass? Then you are at the right place at the right time, listening to the Julie Tussie Show podcast. Welcome. And while you're here, please subscribe and leave us a good review. Also, let your friends and family know about the Julie Tussie Show. Get on the Julie Tussie train. We're going somewhere, baby. Pop the glam pain. It's time for the Julie Tussie Show live guest, current events, scathing exposés. The original suburban bombshell, the big blonde baby. Giving you the fastest, funniest, most informative 30 minutes of your life. And now, here's Julie Tussie. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Julie Tussie Show. I am so excited to be here with you today, and I have a fantastic treat for you. Now, you may or may not know this, but I also do a podcast called the Grace Girls and Company Podcast. I do that with none other than my Stacy Jones. She's done a lot of radio and um, podcasts with Gary and I. She is also known as the Right Reverend SJ, and she is known as the Louise of Thelma and Louise from the radio show. So if you haven't heard that, you can go and listen to Gary Tussie's podcast, Real Gary Tussie, and it's on iHeart and iHeart Radio and iTunes. It's also syndicated. So we're working hard here for you people to give you some isolation relief. That's right. Isolation relief right here coming out of Richmond, Kentucky. So I wanted to do, well, I was talking with Stace today, and we did a Grace Girls and Company podcast, and it was called Stand Up and Stand Out. Man, I was stirred up to stand up and stand out. (laughs) So we did a fantastic podcast, and you know, traditionally on the Julie Tussie Show, I will release here and there the Sunday edition of the Julie Tussie Show. This podcast was so good, so encouraging, and so enlightening. I'm telling you, you are going to hear it and you're going to love it. It could change your life. You know we're all about that on the Julie Tussie Show. So the other reason that I am putting it out is that Gary and I, I are up to something really fun and really amazing, and we're doing we're some big steps right now. You know, we've talked a lot on this podcast about how when you go through something like the coronavirus, we've never been through anything like this before, but sometimes there's things in life that kind of cripple us, feel like they're going to stop us. We could just lay down and cry and eat bonbons and watch TV and suffer through it, or we can, what do we do on the Julie Tussie Show? We make it our defining moment moment, right? You can make it your defining moment. You can turn this thing that was meant for bad or seemingly going to harm or stop or slow your life and your vision and your progress, and you can turn it to good. How can you do that? By taking steps to discipline yourself, discipline your time, take this extra time to find out what it is you want to do in life and take steps towards that dream, that vision, that goal that you have. So because of that, that's what we've been working on here in the TME studios in the Tussie Music and Entertainment TV. We've been working on that with our YouTube channel. So number one. I need you to know that we are working on building our television studio. Now, we already had all the equipment. We've been doing uh, the cooking show. You guys know that. It's even on the Julie Tussie show for you to hear. We've been doing all of that, but we wanted to do more. So we're building a set right now. We're designing a set, putting it together. And Gary Tussie is going to be doing real the real Gary Tussie show. Um, well, it's not a podcast. The real Gary Tussie show, television show. Show. Right here in TME Studios, I'm going to be doing a Christian talk show, and oh my gosh, I'm so excited, and then we're going to do some television together. Now, our goal is to be able to stream 24-7 on YouTube. 
So to do that, we need you. We need your help. We need about 800 people, maybe a little bit less, to go over to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TME TV. That's youtube.com forward slash C as in cat slash TME TV and subscribe. Now, if you'd like to call your friends and family and have them subscribe too, we would love that. <laughs> We would love that, but we are determined to get our um, sub- subscriptions up. We've actually had this channel for like 20 years, and we've all we've ever really done with it is archive things. Like we just pop things on. Maybe uh, somebody wants to see the cooking show, so it's on there. The podcast is on there. Kind of like this hub, right? Music, podcasting, television, anything, just about anything you can find um, in our lives, you'll find on this YouTube channel. But we've never promoted it, so we decided, all right, let's let's do this. Let's take this time in isolation, this COVID-19, we're going to turn it for our good and we're going to make this thing take off. So we're now in the planning stages. Gary and I are overjoyed. We're very excited. We're stirred up. We know we got some things to say to you and you're going to love this programming. Now, the ultimate goal, of course, would be really cool to own a television station. So here we are at the beginnings. Join us. Get on the ground level and join us. Now, another way that you can help is you can go to Venmo and you can support financially. You can give a one-time gift. You can call. You can uh, email me and and become a monthly partner. But you can become a partner with us in getting this television situation off the ground in a big way. As you know, we're all about positive programming. We're all about encouraging you to be everything you were created to be and to do everything you were created to do. And it's going to be so fun. Along with that, we want to encourage you to let your friends and family know about the podcast, okay? So the Julie Tussie Show here, if you like it, go to iTunes and leave a good review. That moves us up in the way that people find us, and that's what we need to do. So I'm so glad that you're here. I think you're going to enjoy this program. I think that you're going to really, really want to become part of what we're doing. Reach out to me at the com. You can sign up on the mailing list. And you can also communicate with me there. You can also reach me, reach me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. Uh, All right, you guys, enjoy and have a great, great Sunday. We will be talking with you next week. That is exciting. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I have with me the Right Reverend S.J. Stacy Jones. How you doing, girlfriend? I'm doing fine, darling. How are you doing? <laughs> well, darling, I'm just as fine as you are. I'm just in the South and you're in the North. <laughs> yeah, that's What's only funny, different. I'm from the North and I live in the South and it's so it's reversed. Yeah. It's reversed. And, it's hilarious. Uh, what can Something I happens. What can I do uh-huh. about it? You know what I mean? So you say you're in Michigan sounding like you belong here, and I'm down here sounding like I belong up there. <laughs> but when I speak to my homies at, in Michigan, they're all like, uh, you have an accent. Matter of fact, Dana, our friend Dana, who is you've introduced me to, yeah. she said, yeah. I thought you were from uh, Kentucky. I thought you were born and raised. <laughs> I'm like, no, girl. See? What's wrong with you? That's what happened. <laughs> Northerners move south. I'm sorry, but you all kind of pick up the accent. But if a southerner moves north, or uh, yeah, moves north, uh, they, they never sound they, northern. I still have my accent, but mm-hmm. I I don't hear it anymore. I don't. I literally do not hear it anymore. Well, but you sound beautiful. We're yes, glad to have you on the Grace Girls and Company podcast. I'm excited. Woo! I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. It's it's a great day. I am on a mission, and I've pulled you in. Of course, I drag you into all of my um, shenanigans. <laughs> all my shenanigans, you come on in. Biggest thieves always. That's yeah. right. Um, I'm on a mission to be isolation relief. That's what I want our podcast to be right now. Isolation relief. That's my mission. And so Wonderful. today we're gonna we're gonna relieve that isolation blues. <laughs> Oh, oh, that sounds like a song. 
lot of that going around <laughs> right now. Da, da, I was stuck at the house. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Quiet as a mouse. Da, 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 da. It's never like me. Da, 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 da. I'm going up a tree, which is, is what we're going to talk about TV? today. <laughs> I sit and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I got a message together because I was thinking about Zacchaeus today. So we are huh? gonna talk about going up a tree today because we all kinda up a tree right now. Um we sure. what I wanted to tell you though, real quick, Stace and all of the Grace girls and guys listening in, is that we are in the process of building a TV studio. Now we've already got oh. all the equipment and we've been doing everything in the actual um studio where the computer is and the sound and all that but we're building a set right now because the oh. Lord hath heard my cry. <laughs> Yeah, and answered your prayer. And he's answering my prayer. Gary and I have done television uh since since before we even were f- barely friends. It's just insane. We've right. done television on and off TBN and the Word Network and you know and, and not bragging but that's kind of I just started so young and so did he in in that. So yes. I haven't done a whole lot of TV. Um, we did the television show, the food, the cooking show, the fabulous cooking show and yeah. it was really, really mm-hmm. good but I'm telling you I couldn't preach the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, not when you're slicing tomatoes. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I could, yeah. but it was a completely different market. And when we were getting yeah. ready to, ABC wanted us to go on. And yes, the whole time did. I'm doing the cooking show, I love it because I really uh, I really enjoy teaching. I guess it's just that, that part of me being a mom of six kids and, eight, and going, you know, eight grandkids and all of this stuff. So All that, yeah. Yeah, so you end up just teaching, teaching, teaching your whole life. And I remember when I was 18, I would have 12-year-old girls that I was discipling, you know, that the Lord would bring in my life. Mm-hmm. They came from abusive homes. I would just take them in. I think you were the same. Just We were the neighborhood was, house. Exactly. You know, we were the neighborhood we, we, house. We were. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of there. But so the whole time I'm doing this cooking show, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, man, if I was going to make a living doing something, it wouldn't be this. It would be preaching on TV and doing music. So, but I loved it. And whatever the Lord opens, you know, you got to do what Jesus opens for you Mm -hmm. to do. So, so we went ahead and we did that. And then ABC wanted to pick us up and, it was going to take about $6,000 a month to do the ABC wow. show, which a lot of people think when a television uh, studio picks you up that they pay for everything. They don't. You do. No, no. You do. And right. you find the sponsors you and you do sponsors the show. and everything. Yeah. So we were doing yeah. that on a smaller level and it was working. We spent a whole year. We did about 14 episodes and it was great. We got great response and we were like, oh my gosh, ABC wants us. But in the back of my mind, I'm praying, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'll do this if this is what God, if, if it's what he opens up for me. To, but I did the prayer. Well, right. I did the prayer. Oh. You know, the prayer, Lord. <laughs> Oh yeah, Lord, you know okay. where my heart is. You know I'll do whatever you ask me to do, wherever you make a way. I believe in taking every decision to an answer, not to a yes or a no. Not just going, no, I'm not going to do that. Gary Tussie taught me that, right. and early right. on in life, and so that's how we live our life. So whatever opportunity comes, we pray. But I remember praying and saying, Lord, if if doing a cooking show is not your perfect will for my life. Right. I would really love to do a Christian talk show. I would really sure. love to do that. So guess what? We ended Ta-da. up not going with ABC. Some things were promised that didn't happen. We we couldn't get the sponsors to come on. And of course, it would have been a nightmare, I think, maybe with the COVID-19. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, and $6,000 a month for doing a cooking show and nobody's working and businesses are closed, you know. Right. So God, right. he knows. Right. See how he knows. He knows our beginning from our yeah. end. I love that from about Jesus end. and I, how if we just stay soft hearted before him and we let him have his way in our lives. You know what I mean? If we right. just let yeah. him I honestly, if God asked me to go clean toilets somewhere 
and that's what he wanted me to do, honey, that's what I would do because I have learned that no matter what it is that he asks of you, if you will just well, obey him, even if you don't understand it or it doesn't fit your vision, <laughs> you right, know what I right. mean? If you will just yes. let him have his way, he is so amazing in knowing us so much better than ourselves and in making us happy and fulfilled. Like I could, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, and I hope he doesn't make me do this. This, <laughs> but uh, I, and you too, I'm sure. But I'm 100 percent sure that if the Lord um, had me cleaning toilets, I would be happy as a lark doing whatever it is He created me to do, and He wants me to do at that time. Sure. And I and see, and I didn't mean to say all this, but this is the Holy Ghost. I know when the Holy Ghost has me on a trail. But the thing is, it sometimes Stace, we have to do things that we don't think we need to do to get where we're going to go. Hey, well, that, yeah, that'll preach right there. Come on, girl. Come on, Grace oh, girls. Yeah. Give me a... Ooh, oh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we're going to go through things that we did right. not think we should go through right. or we do not think nope. we should go through or we do not want to go through to become the right. person that is going to do the things we're gonna do you know right you know like yeah we could just go on and on i'm not gonna do it today because i'm gonna talk about zacchaeus but i'm just saying if we just stay soft and pliable and sensitive to the lord as women as wives as mothers as servants of of jesus that that we just throw ourselves at his feet and we just let him have his way let him have his way with that husband let him have his way with those children let him have his way in your income in how you make a living in your ministry in your life just let him have your life it'll right. be so much better and so i'm praising right. him today i'm thanking him with my whole heart i feel i feel giddy i feel happy i feel so excited about what god is doing and the awesome part about it is is that this studio is going to house not just what i'm doing with a christian talk talk show but that gary is starting his real gary tussie and he's going to be preaching the gospel teaching on prayer teaching oh, on yay. his own show yeah. Woo! Yes, and then we are oh, also great. together going to do television. So he's going to have his show. I'll have my show, and together we'll be doing television. And I w- I'm going to say it out of my mouth right now. I won't be surprised if we don't end up with our own TV station someday. Oh, it won't surprise me at all. <laughs> That's Not okay. A bit. So there it is. That's kind of my heart's desire, and so you know, you know how there it is. Go. But I just want to, I just want to be a blessing, and I want to be a blessing to you all today. And Stacy wants to be a blessing to you. But Stacy, some God laid something on my heart today to talk about, and we're just going to take a few minutes and talk about it. So we'll come to that. We're going to talk about Zacchaeus right after this brief but awesome, awesome programming. The Julie Tussie Show and the Grace Girls and Company podcast are outreaches of The Voice Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. If you would like to give an offering, you can do it several different ways. First, you can go to Venmo and look for The Voice INC. Again, that's Venmo, The Voice INC. You can also go to the com and give on PayPal and Cash App. If you'd like to become a monthly VIP voice impact partner with our ministry, please reach out to me at julietussy at gmail. Again, that's julietussy at gmail. Remember, all gifts are tax deductible. To get your copy of the music you hear in the program today, go to amazon.com and search Julie Tussie or Gary and Julie Tussie Music. And we're back. I hope you're enjoying the music. I'm writing an eighth CD right now to be released in 2020. What? What? So excited about that. That's also a big part of the Grace Girl thing. And then um, I've got all of the music that you hear and some you're not hearing right over on Amazon. So just go search Julie Tussie or Gary and Julie Tussie and get some of this music because, oh my gosh, it's going to bless your socks off. All right, so what the Lord put on my heart about uh, about to talk about today is something really cool. I'm going to call this Stand Up and Stand Out. 
Do you know, as women, so many times we try to fit into the flock. Right. Right? We try yep. so hard, yep. right, Stacy? Sometimes oh, yeah. we take offense if someone says we're extra. Like extraordinary or extra. Like you're so extra, like you're diva ish or you're high maintenance or you're oh, or yeah, you're yeah, yeah. creative or you're if you're different than the flock, okay? I I wanna be a flamingo <laughs> among the flock. <laughs> you know, that's how extra I am. Well, you know. <laughs> God did call us a peculiar people, so I just take it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. But you know, as we're growing people up, people say and, I'm weird. I know, I know. Well, thank you. I guess that's it. That people think that you're weird. But you know, we've all been yep. hand created by God. God created us to be exactly what we are and who we are. The Bible says that He knit us. He knit us together, and He formed us in our mother's womb. And when we're teenagers and we begin, we're in school and there's peer pressure, a lot of times we feel like we have to fit the form, that we have to live in yes. the box, that we have to be status conformed, quo. conformed yep. to be the status quo. And don't you dare be yep. different. And don't you dare be, you know, stand out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right. I want right. to talk about stand up and stand out because when it comes to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a stand up and stand out kind of guy. Now I don't know if you did this. I have to say, Julie, you're so funny the way you say his name. It cracks me up. I didn't even know who you were talking about for a minute <laughs> because you know how us Southerners pronounce his name, Zacchaeus. There you go, Zacchaeus. You, and I'm like, who the heck is Zacchaeus? Well, who's hey, he talking I about? I don't care oh. if it's Zacchaeus. I'm going to call him Little Zach. <laughs> Little there you go. No, Lil, Lil <laughs> Zach. <laughs> He's not going to be a tax collecting rapper. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love so I don't perfect. know if he did this on purpose, but he was a personality that stood out. But what I loved about him, what made him stand out to Jesus was his his determination and his tenacity. And, you know, you can't yes. be a tax collector in that day when they're, I think they're probably like thugs is what I imagine in my mind. Like, give me your taxes, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and people did not like tax collectors. But I want to read this in Luke nineteen. Let's read the story of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, uh, Lil Zach. Uh, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified because to me, the King James is the man version of the Bible and the Amplified is the woman version of the Bible because we say like 15,000 more words a day than a man does. That's what I said. See? Yes. We got to, and we yeah. all got to know. So um, Luke uh, chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. And there was a man called Lil Zach. Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector, and he was rich, baby. Okay, we could go right there for a while, but we won't. But if you rich, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. That's right. That's and he right. was trying to see Jesus, which one he was. So he was. There was a whole crowd coming, right? Jesus yep, is in front, and he's like, he was trying to see Jesus, which one he was, but he could not on account of the crowd because he was small in stature. That's why I call him yep. Lil Zach. He was small and st- so right. evidently it was short. And you can relate to these problems. <laughs> um, hello. I put one on a good day with six your, foot with two your, of my hairs up. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And I'm sorry if you, I, I actually am not very tall myself. I'm like 5'4". And it, I'm kind of almost short. And almost tall. <laughs> right in the middle there. Yeah. All right. So well, there's was no so doubt what I am. So, you know. All right. So he had he had something that was debilitating him from having his vision, from fulfilling the vision. He wanted to see who Jesus was. He wanted to see what? him himself with his own eyes. All right. So right. he had a, right. he had something that was stopping him, that was limiting him, and it was his height. So what does he do? So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass that way. So Jesus was about to pass that way. So he runs up, gets in this tree, not far ahead. He sees the crowd coming. He knows Jesus is in there. He's like, man, if I get up here, I'm going to see who this Jesus is. I'm going to see this guy is. who yeah. is this guy. Yep. Yeah. So when Jesus yeah. reached the place, 
he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine All right. what a shocker that would have been? Yeah, yeah. So he said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried and came down, and he received and welcomed him joyfully. I mean, oh, my gosh, I'd be over, I would be over, like, fangirling on Jesus right there. Not Grace girling oh anymore. <laughs> fangirling. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so he hurried and came down and received and welcomed him joyfully. And when the people saw it, they all muttered among themselves and indignantly complained. He has gone oh, yeah, in to be the guest and lodge with a man who is devoted to sin and is a preeminently a sinner. He's preeminently a sinner. That's what they said. Yep. Anybody ever talk bad about oh, yeah. you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Zacchaeus then stood up and solemnly declared to the Lord, See, Lord, the half of my goods I now give by way of restoration to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I now restore four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to all the members of this yes. household since Zacchaeus too is a real spiritual son of Abraham for the man, for the son of man came to seek and to save that that which was lost oh my gosh there's so much just in this text that we could talk about but I want oh, yeah. to point out three things all right number one Zacchaeus had something that hindered him and what did he do instead of cowering instead of running and you know he could have been like oh man I'm so short I'm never yeah. going to be able to see Jesus and just walked away. No, right? He could have let he this, made it work. Right? He, this he, he could have let work. the situation in his life stop him from yes. obtaining what was in his heart to do, and that was right. to see Jesus. But he didn't. What did he do? He stood up. And he stood Mm -hmm. out. He stood up and he stood out. So he goes into the tree and he sees Jesus. And guess what? When he he made the decision to stand up and to stand out, he might not even realize he was standing out by standing up, by, by actually just going ahead and not letting this thing stop him. He became a standout to Jesus. That's right. Woo, girl, does that preach or what? (laughs) <laughs> I love it. Actually, you know, Zacchaeus was um, doing, wanting to see Jesus. And actually, it was really from a pure heart. Oh, yeah. He wanted to see what this man was all about. He didn't even know that, though, in his own heart, that what he was doing was going to bless him abundantly. Oh, no. From no. anything he could have ever, he never saw this coming. No, he was just tenacious, he and he coming. was just—he was just hungry for Jesus, man. And not, he didn't exactly. let circumstances stop him. You know, no. there's nothing he could do about being a certain height, but he could have let it change his—he could have let it change his life to where his life was completely different than what it was because he did see the Savior. He stood up. He stood up against right. the adversity in his life, even the thing he couldn't change. He couldn't exactly. he couldn't change that. But what did he do? He, he found a way around and that kind of makes me that makes me think of when Gary had his heart attack recently to uh, about 2 weeks ago. I went online and studied because of course we didn't deal with heart attacks and my dad had them several of them when I was growing up but we didn't have Google. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. So you only knew whatever you were taught. Exactly. So I was googling about when you have a blockage in your heart they literally your body your heart will grow another artery system or vein system around that blockage and back into the heart now it's never as big and it's never as open as the original but our body is created to do that that to me speaks of our god that's fascinating is that amazing it really does like it'll do two or three channels to get blood in different around that blockage and it in other words, your heart will fight for you to live and be what you were created to be. It will fight. It will. That's it awesome. will recreate itself. Well, that's what Zacchaeus did. He had a. He had a blockage. He had a blockage in in how he was going to fulfill this desire in his heart. Which I believe, when you have a desire right. in your heart that lines up with the word, it's one hundred percent God. 
So he had this desire, like he wanted to see the Savior. He wanted to see who is this guy? Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? Right. And he, and so he circumvented the, the blockage. He circumvented and he found a way. And I'm telling you what, God created our heart to do that. And God created you to be able to do that in your life so that you can see Jesus, so that Jesus can see you stand up. And when you stand up and climb up in that tree or you stand up and take that place, you become a stand out, not only to the people around you, because, you know, everybody in that crowd saw him in the tree. Oh, yes. They saw him in the tree. They're in the world. They're in there probably like, look at that guy. Oh, Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) There's the town midget. He's so embarrassing. What the world are you doing up the tree? <laughs> He's oh my so, gosh! We so don't you want know, anyone to know about this man. But we don't like him. I know exactly. You know? It, he said, "Oh my gosh, can you see that text? He has humiliated himself. He's making exactly. a fool of himself." Have you ever heard any of these things? I have heard these things. Oh, never. You're never oh, going to do I've, this. I've, You're too I've short. Never. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I've never heard a short joke in my life. No, but you never. know what I'm saying. It's talking yes. spiritually to align it to, with spiritual Absolutely. things. You can't do this. You have a blockage. You you mm-hmm. you you slept with a whole bunch of people when you were in high school. Mm-hmm. You could never be a minister, right? You know you you right. got a divorce three times. You could never be a minister. Who exactly. do you think you yep. are? You used to clean toilets, and you think you're going to own your own company. You are a janitor. Exactly. Come on, girl. All I'm lies. telling you, All the blockage. Yep. And sometimes the blockage is the people, because if you think about it, he was short, so that was a hindrance. But he couldn't see for the sure. other people. Right. Okay? Right. Jesus was walking down the road by himself. You would have seen him just fine. Right. So a but lot of times... People are going to be your blockage. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I know. So, Grace Girls, if you're listening today, I don't care. I don't care if you were a prostitute. I don't care if you were a drug addict. I don't care if you no. were just a Susie Q all the time. a goody two-shoes. Right. And uh, I don't care if you were severely anxious and had panic attacks. I don't care if you were super, super shy and you could never speak to another human being. I don't care. I don't care what is in your past and neither does Jesus. I'm telling you, he does not care. He does not see you that way. He does not see you that way. He sees the potential in you. He puts the desire in your heart for him. He puts the dream and the vision in you and he wants you to um, overcome your blockage. Stand up and you will stand out. Stand up and stand out for Jesus. Oh my gosh, I love yes. this. Is this so good? Oh yeah, that's Zacchaeus. good. Good stuff, good stuff. Little Zach. <laughs> now the other thing I love about this is when the people saw it, they all muttered among themselves and indignantly complained. He has gone in to be the guest and of and lodge with a man who is devoted to sin and preeminently a sinner. And let's take let's take five minutes to talk about this. How many times yeah. Have you not reached out to somebody because they are a sinner? I'm not asking you personally, Stacy. I'm asking everybody listening. How many times do we as Christians feel like, oh, we can't do that because somebody from the church might see me, uh, might see me, what was the oh, word? Yeah. Being a guest of and lodging with this sinner, yeah. right? No, no, no. And what's we have so, it so horrible backwards. about that. Oh my yeah. Gosh, we have it so backwards. Exactly. It's so backwards. Exactly. The church is, is to reach the sinner, people. The church is to reach yeah. the sinner. The church is not for us to just build ourselves Judge. up. We're all up in there being all introverted and ministry, right. ministry, ministry, ministry. Well, all of that ministry to you is to equip you to go out and reach the sinner. And honey, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go and be yeah. a guest of and lodge with the sinners if you're going to reach them for Jesus. And yeah. I'm telling you. This, there's this mentality sometimes, I think, in certain churches that they can even be cliquish themselves. It's kind of like us four. Yeah, even, and no even more. within the church. But it's time, you know? honey, that we break out of the walls of the church. It's time that we yeah, stand up. It is. It's time that we stand out. And if you're not strong enough, to, if you're going to go hang out with a drug addict and you had a problem and you're not strong enough, don't do it. Go hang out with a no. woman who's got another problem. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Let's be right, wise. But right. it's time that we start being the love of God in the earth. God is love. He does not have love. He is love. And if he is in us, we is love. And if you're going to love someone, okay. you're going to accept them right exactly where they are. You're not going to wait until right. they don't shoot up heroin. You're not going to wait until they don't embezzle money. You're not gonna, You're not going to wait until they're perfect. You're not going to wait till they quit being a gossip and a liar. You're not going to wait. You, right. You know what I mean? You're not going to wait if yes. you are love. Love does not wait to love. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And so it's time, no. Grace Girls and guys, that we rise up, that we stand up. And we stand up and say, you know what? Yes, you saw me in the in the bar in the restaurant. And I was sitting at the bar. And I was drinking what might look right. like a Shirley Temple, but it was a cherry soda. And... It's exactly. time. It's time that we just say, "I don't care what you think. I am loving on people." We sh- we. It's time that we we share what we have, and I love yeah. the thought. Don't you, Stacy? I love the thought of being really, really real and really, really loving people. I I remember. Yeah. I remember the pressure. The pressure from the church I went to. That I couldn't even set my foot in the bar area of a restaurant for fear. Oh my goodness! Sake. For fear, Stacy, of what they would think of me. Oh man! And see, that's that. That's not pleasing God. That that no, that's no, because I'm man. telling you and what, God doesn't want that. I know. You know. We go sing in restaurants that have bars all the time. And we don't even sing Christian and music all the time. We don't even <laughs> sing Christian music all the time. I know you've been with me, but I will tell you what. Oh, yeah. I will, I'm choosy about what I sing, but at a James yes. at last ain't hurting anybody. You know, there's so right. many songs that you can do to make people happy, but it gave us an entire different mission field. It gave us an sure. entire different realm of our lives. And I'll tell you, the coolest thing that happened was one time we went in and Gary and I got the backside of a restaurant. Oh, it's really old here in Richmond. In the front, they have a restaurant and a bar. And, and several businesses have come in and out of it. But at this time, in the back, there was a ballroom. And so we wanted to just go play music. We wanted to take our band, play music, open, and then welcome all these young, talented people, and and even the, some that were retired, some whoever in our area was doing music. And we would bring right. them in and let them perform for a couple hours, and then we would close it out with our band. And to come in and see us, you had to pay $2 and bring food for the poor. Okay. So we that did that. That is so cool. It, it, it was so awesome. cool. So what happened is as we're in this restaurant, we are meeting these young people and it wasn't oh we yeah. were there about six months and it wasn't long and these college girls were calling me mama julie because they knew if there was something <laughs> wrong right if there's there, something they yeah. knew who to talk to about uh fornication yeah. about Whatever alcohol, about through. drugs about this one being mean to me how what am i going to do with my future they knew that if they came to me although i wasn't up there singing about jesus every single song they knew that I loved them, and they knew that I had an answer. Exactly. And, so, and right. they knew that you would accept them just the way they were. And I did. I did. No I, judgment. And we loved on them. And you know, the Bible doesn't say that we all reap. every. That we're, It says that we sow seed, and he waters, right? Yeah. We sow seed. So sometimes One, we're going to yeah. lead people to Jesus, and sometimes we're just going to sow seed, and someone else is going to be a laborer. But the truth is... The greatest commandment is to love one another. That's the greatest commandment. We are to love each other. And so I love those girls. And to this day, that was years ago. And to this day, I love them. Now, on the flip side of that, and here's where I'd have to draw a line between religion and Christianity. On the flip side of that, a pastor came in that we were associated with and we were going to his church. And he saw that some guy was sitting at his table having French fries, a cheeseburger, and a beer. And that man never would not let us minister in his pulpit from there on. And the other thing that oh, happened, I know, right. I know. And the other thing that happened was that all that food that we collected, we wanted to give it to a food ministry in our area, right? So we get a sure, bunch collected. Sure. We call them. They wouldn't accept it because that that restaurant served alcohol. Oh. 
Shame on them. I know. I'm so, sorry. So, I know. So see, Shame you, can on see them. you can see the difference between affecting the lives of others with the love of Jesus and just standing up and standing out and standing on your own two feet and yes. being religious. Because people went hungry because they did that, and people, uh, and we weren't allowed to sing in the church. But but if some superstar came in that was in bars all the time, but had a Christian album came in, they were right straight in the pulpit. So to me, to me, on all Double that, standards. on all that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <you> know? <laughs> so let's be. Can you spell that? Yeah. Can you spell that word? Like that. Mm-hmm. Can you spell that? T H. T H T H T H. Thank you. So I'm here to tell you, I'm I'm 30 wink wink for a long time, and I've lived a lot of life. And what I have found is I am most fulfilled when I am standing up and standing out. I want Jesus to notice me. I don't care if people notice me or not, but they're going to. They're going to when you will love God, right. when you will love on others. And, you know, just get yeah. ready. Just get ready because you are so valuable. You are so precious. You are so important to Jesus. Oh, my gosh, Stacy! Women are like women make the world go round. I don't care what anybody says. Well, it's true. Women make the world it's go true. round. And and you are the epicenter you are the epicenter of that family and that life and those people that god sends to you just love them just yeah. love them love yourself forgive yourself know that he's there know that there's always a way to get to jesus you can find a way and he's going to notice you he's going to notice you and he's going to come and be with you oh my gosh yeah. and don't care what the naysayers saying you know my last point in this that i absolutely loved was that when jesus <clears throat> When Jesus um, told him, come on down, it changed Zacchaeus. In an in a instant, he said, it says, so Zacchaeus stood up and solemnly declared to the Lord, see, Lord, the half of my goods I now give. He became, he, yeah. he wanted to give back. He, he realized, okay, maybe I haven't been doing things the way Jesus would like. <laughs> you know, yeah. Maybe I've been kind of shaking them <laughs> down a little bit. <laughs> But um, yeah, and, and he instantly became he instantly wanted to give back his heart was full and he wanted to give back. And he said, and if I've done something yeah. wrong to somebody unrighteously or, un, you know, in a bad way, I'm going to restore four times as much. So, if you know, if that day uh, he took ten dollars and or, which might have been a million back then, I don't know. But he took a certain amount of money. He was going to restore four times. And, you know, I'll guarantee you that he did keep his word because God changed him that that encounter oh, with yeah. Jesus. So by standing. Standing up, he Jesus stood out. Life. Jesus n- took notice of him. Jesus gave him time and attention and spent time with him. And just it instantly changed the man. It instantly changed him. So I love that. For the Son yeah. of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. So that shows me <laughs> that Zacchaeus right. was lost. And you know what? Jesus didn't care what anybody said about him when he went to his house and hung out with him. Well, no, he didn't. He Not didn't. a bit. You don't you ever, know? you don't see it where Jesus is like, okay, okay, calm down, y'all. I am the Savior. I'm the Savior. Yeah. <laughs> I can stay out of sin if I go to Zacchaeus' house. He didn't even comfort him. He, he wasn't no. moved in any way. I love that. No, so, like, you know, you just have to Come on it. down. You know, like, you need to teach me. You need to talk. <laughs> come on, Zacchaeus. You've you collected know? enough money. Cook me a good meal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I love it. I love Jesus. I love the word. Well, listen, thank yes. you, Stacy, so much. I know, sure. I know oh, you've had some things going on today. And I want you to give my love to Miss Dana when she comes to visit you today. But I, I want you to uh, sure. I want you to know how much I appreciate you and we love you on Grace Girls and Company. You're Aww. a co-founder with me. <laughs> We've Thank been you, doing honey. this a long time. I am so we? privileged. I'm so honored. Yeah, we've done this for a while. Definitely. We have. Thanks for listening today, all you Grace Girls and Grace Guys listening out there. Please do me a favor. Go to you to our YouTube channel. Just Google YouTube and Julie Tussie. It'll pull you over to our TME TV. We are adding 800 more people or a little bit less. And when we do that, we can actually do live stream TV for you there. So we're really, really looking forward to that. When you think of us, pray. When you think of us, pray about giving to help support the ministry here 
The Voice Incorporated. You can become a VIP partner, meaning that you join with us monthly. You can give one time offering. You can give several times offering. You can join monthly and you can go and find us on Venmo. And that's The Voice INC. You can also find us on um, the Cash app. That's the money sign, the voice INC, and you can go to the Julie com, and you can click give and it'll take you right over to PayPal. If you want to do something else and you want to be creative, you can email me at the Julie Tussy show at Gmail or Julie Tussie at Gmail. I love you guys so much. I'm going to pray for you right now. Now, Father, I thank you for every person that is listening today to this podcast. I say that they are blessed blessed more than abundantly Father God that you provide every need that they have through this coronavirus I thank you Father God that we will rise up and we will be the healed of the Lord if they're fighting sickness or disease I say that they are healed in the name of Jesus if they have a need I thank you Father that you are a need fulfiller if they have um, if they need a way made that you are the way maker for them right now Father now I just speak blessings to them to their households, to their businesses, to their families, and to their ministries yeah. in the name of Jesus. I love you yeah. guys. Stacy loves you, and Jesus loves you uh-huh. so much. We'll talk to you next time. You are listening to the Grace Girls and Company podcast, where dreams really do come true. You are not created to be ordinary, but extraordinary. You are not created to be common, but uncommon. You are not created to be average, but above average. You are not created to be tolerable or passable. No, but you are created to be remarkable, noteworthy, impressive, striking, outstanding, brilliant, excellent, superb, praiseworthy. We could go on and on about how awesome you are. If you'd like to support this ministry and this podcast, go to the com right now, my sister, and become a VIP, a voice impact partner with me on a mission from God to reach women with the gospel of Jesus. And thank you so much for your kind consideration. And remember, all gifts are tax deductible. I want to take a minute to say thank you so much to our supporters, underwriters, sponsors, those of you that give to our nonprofit corporation, The Voice Incorporated. If life is my oyster, darling, pass the hot sauce.
you want.